Happy New Year and welcome to Peoria's Pulse, a program of news and information about the services, programs and events going on this month in the city of Peoria. I'm Bo Larson, Public Information Manager for the city. Before we get started, let's take a look back at some of the recent events and activities that happened last month in Peoria. The Peoria Police Department didn't mind some early morning shopping at Peoria's Northern Target store. This holiday season, the Peoria Police Officers Association hosted their annual Shop with a Cop event. Fifty children from the community paired off with a Peoria Police employee in order to shop for Christmas gifts for themselves and their family members. Buying gifts for the kids is the highlight of the year for the PPOA. The Peoria Police Officers donate their time and hold fundraisers throughout the year in order to cover costs. The kids and officers had a good time looking over the merchandise. The interaction between the children and police officers can be an inspiration of a lifetime. Shopping with a cop, a Peoria police officer certainly made a Merry Christmas for these families. One of the highlights in a police officer's career is the recognition they receive when they do outstanding work, and it gets recognized with a promotion. Recently, at the Police Administration Building in Peoria, Chief of Police Roy Mincher introduced to a large crowd of fellow officers, city leaders and family, four officers who are being promoted in the Peoria Police Department. Commander Robert Sanders, a 16-year veteran of the department, was promoted from the rank of commander to the rank of Deputy Chief of Operations. Lieutenant Clark Collier was promoted to the rank of commander. Collier has been with the agency since 1995. Lieutenant Ken Gentry, who has been with the department since 1994, was promoted to the rank of commander. And Charles Bezio is being promoted from the rank of sergeant to the rank of lieutenant. He has been with the department more than 15 years. The city of Peoria was honored to be a part of a special program where Habitat for Humanity of Central Arizona received a check for $200,000 and help from Wells Fargo volunteers to rehabilitate six homes in Glendale and Peoria. The grant is part of Wells Fargo Leading the Way Home program, a nationwide effort to increase the availability and affordability of housing while stabilizing and rebuilding distressed neighborhoods. Wells Fargo Regional President Pamela Conboy presented the check to Glendale and Peoria City officials, including Peoria Mayor Bob Barrett. It, it means a lot. We, we, because we work with the Habitat, people come in and their families come and, and they develop the most basic need that you have, which is for shelter. But they invest themselves too. They, they put in their own energy, their own time and their own effort in terms of constructing the home. Habitat for Humanity is the one that works with the homeowners, teaches them how to qualify, teaches them how to, how to pay their bills and works with them. And then the homeowner themselves must come out and put some sweat equity into it. So they have to help build the house. So if they, because of that investment in it, this is one of the most successful programs there are. Even in difficult times, if we can look for ways to make it work, we can't do it alone, Habitat can't do it alone, the city of Peoria can't do it alone, and Wells Fargo can't do it alone. But together, all three of us, working in concert with each other and caring for each other and caring about the outcome of our efforts, the impact on our community, we can make a difference. And we do that each and every day. So we want to make sure that we're able to give back through grants and giving, volunteerism, and making a difference in our communities. There is always something good happening in Peoria. When I come back, we will talk about some exciting events coming up that you don't want to miss. But first, in February, on Valentine's Day, Arizona celebrates 100 years of statehood. There are events and celebrations happening all over the state, including right here in Peoria. On February 3rd and 4th, Peoria will have two events commemorating our introduction into statehood. On Friday, February 3rd, at the Peoria Sports Complex, there will be festivities surrounding baseball, including a home run hitting derby featuring some of the area's top high school players and an old-style baseball game played by players of a vintage baseball league. The game will be played with the rules and tools of how the game was played 100 years ago. There will be lots of displays and activities going on, so stop by the sports complex beginning at 4 p.m. Then on Saturday, February 4th, come to the dedication of the new Centennial Plaza at City Hall. This special event will include historical displays from Peoria's past. Take a walk along the plaza and see the historical timeline placed in bricks along the walkway. There will be music and a tribute to Girl Scouts who are also celebrating their 100 years of existence. You can even buy a box of cookies. Governor Jan Brewer is one of our special guests. It begins at 10 a.m. on Saturday, February 4th. 
I hope you can join us in celebrating our great state's birthday and enjoy our city's newest park. Ball breaking low under the bat, and the count is 1-1. One one. It's an ideal baseball day. Nice crowd in the stands and nobody out on the grass. Conditions are ideal for a good game. Come to the Arizona Centennial Baseball Celebration at the Peoria Sports Complex and enjoy a vintage baseball game, historical displays, and a spectacular fireworks show. Admission is free. Presented by the Salt River Project and the City of Peoria. There's a lot going on in Peoria and many more events coming up this spring. One event which has been a yearly pilgrimage for many is spring training at the Peoria Sports Complex. Here to talk about all the fun in the sun and great baseball is Melissa Melton, Marketing Manager for the Peoria Sports Complex. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Good. You're a regular on the show, aren't you? Oh, yeah. yeah. Love it. Love so it. spring training starting. Yeah, Start. It's that time again. Yeah, yeah we're excited. Um, you know, the box office is open mm -hmm. at the stadium. Um, so Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., you can go pick up tickets. Um, of course, you can always order them um, online. And that's at sportscomplex.com? or It's at uh, springtrainingpeoria.com, okay. and that's where all the information about spring training is. And okay. um, you can just go on the schedule there, and there's live ticket links, and they'll take you to oh, the respective sites to buy um, the tickets. Um, but if you do go to the box office right now um, and buy tickets through January 14th, you'll actually get two free lawn tickets for either March 3rd, March 4th, or March 5th. So, oh, great. Yeah, great just deal. a kind of a promotion to... Uh, drive some ticket sales right now and, and get people going. And, you know, opening weekend is on a weekend. Yeah. So it's nice. That's you know? fantastic. Yeah, Great way really, to bring mm -hmm. the family out and yeah. enjoy it. And there's also uh, another fun event that's going to be happening on... Uh, the third? On, on the third, yeah, so it's a, yeah, it's busy a, weekend. Yeah, great day that day on so the third. So tell us some of the things that families can do and some of the games. I mean, there's so much to talk about when you're right. talking spring training. Yeah, so we have 30 home games this season. Wow. Um, so like we said, we start March 3rd and go till April 2nd. Just have a few off days. Um, most of our games are at 105, but we do actually have a chunk of night games this um, season, most starting at 705. So, um, you know, one of our, our family favorites is the family four-pack that happens on Mondays, and families can get four lawn seats, four uh, sodas, four bags of chips, and four hot dogs for $30. I mean, what a deal. It's yeah. a steal, and I know that's a pun on words, but it really <laughs> yeah. is a steal. I, that's just so affordable. Kids can go run around in the lawn. You guys can enjoy a nice day out at the ballpark. So, yeah, it's really good. Um, we also have Kids Day every Sunday, so we uh, let the kids, uh, you know, run the ballpark. Oh, they get um, to run on the field and stuff? Well, or? yeah, there's a variety of things that we do. We pick... Um, kids, they just call in or email us or whatever, and we um, let a few of the kids' children stand with the players during the national anthem on the field, so that's really cool. Um, the players really embrace them and take them in. What's the, what's the age limit there? That be um, Yeah, well, it's definitely <laughs> under 12, but oh, we try it. to do the younger kids. Yeah, okay. sorry, you can't do it. We try to let the younger kids do that because um, the next thing that we let the um, three other children do is um, do the PA announcements. So during a certain inning, we actually let them announce whatever our home, the home team is. We um, They announce the batter. So that is so cool to hear a, a kid's voice over the uh, loudspeaker, you know, and sometimes they get some tough players and they do really well with their names. So we usually save that for the older kids. So, so how does a mom or a dad, you know, sign their kid up for this? You know, when we started this a couple seasons ago, we just put it on all our collateral and, and, and promotional stuff and people were just emailing and coming in and, and they all know about it. We've already gotten emails about oh, it. Oh, that's So fun. people do know and, you know, and a lot of um, families, um, they're looking to make the most out of their trip. So they're going to buy tickets, but they're also going to look at your website and see what else is going on and then, you know, try to make that experience and that memory, which is what we really want for their kids. You know, we want the young fans too. So, so, so I know this is the home of uh, the Seattle Mariners and San Diego Padres, mm -hmm. and they have been for a long time, and mm -hmm. I'm, they're going to be forever, I hope. <laughs> right, yeah. um, but there's always, you know, the Cubs come in, mm -hmm. the Diamondbacks, you know, how, you know, those are really packed games. Mm -hmm. What's the best time to go to a spring training game? Uh, well, it depends what you want. You know, a lot of people have certain teams they want to play. And, you know, obviously those are the, the set games and that's mm -hmm. when you can come. Um, you know, last few seasons, well, since I've been here during spring break, um, which I think for our school districts that are in the area of the sports complex is um, the week of the 17th, it's packed. I mean, yeah. everybody's coming, you know, yeah. so that's also good. Weekends are always busy. And then, like you said, the select games, um, you know, it just depends what you want. You know, we've got dog day 
Oh, really? We've got military day. Dog day. You can bring your dog? Yeah, you can bring your dog. And it was awesome. Last year, we had, I think, 300 dogs all <laughs> sitting in left field. And it was funny because, you know, um, towards the end of every game, we always report what the attendance is. And we reported, uh, you know, what, what, what 6,000 humans, 300 dogs. And it was really <laughs> quite funny. So, and we, yeah, we partner with Arizona Humane Society. Oh, and so that's awesome. Uh, we hope that's going to be bigger and better this year. We've got Military Day, and so we do a flyover and military exhibitions and things like that. Um, a blood drive, so if you want to come out and give blood, mm -hmm. you can give blood and get some free tickets. Um, we and, do and all the, sorts of things. And the concession stands are always so reasonable, aren't they? And, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We've always got, you know, deals for kids and for parents. Um, you know, we've got the um, $2 hot dogs every Wednesday. Um, you know, they, there's just a wide variety, too, between the concession stands and the vendors that come in. Uh, you know, we're always known for our variety of food. And, we, you know, we bring a little flavor from the team's um, respective markets. But And, and what, what makes a spring training game so great? You know, it's, it's, it's one of the things I always thought was because you're right there on top of the, yeah. the field. Well, and that's what it is. I mean, you know, it's, it's Major League Baseball in a private intimate setting and you're just you're so close and it's so affordable I mean you know our, our most expensive ticket is $23 and you're usually up in the rafters for $23 at a, at a major league right. uh, stadium so a lot of people enjoy that you know and you've got the big berm and and uh, people just walking around it's during the day so Always you sunny. know people yeah. are not working so they're excited about that yeah. usually. So, so tell us again how can you get tickets and see schedules um, well you can just go onto our website springtrainingpeoria.com and um, it has a list of all the promotions, the schedule, how to get tickets if you want to buy them online. Um, you can also call the 1-800 number that's on the website, or you can go to our box office. Again, that's open Monday through Friday, uh, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., along with the souvenir store if you want Wonderful. to get some gifts. Yeah. So. And while well, the stadium's also open year-round for so many things. So, right, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. lots of things. <laughs> well, spring is here, so now's the time to make plans for a spring training game. Melissa, thank you very much for uh, telling us more about it today, and we'll be back right after this. Peoria takes great pride in being a sustainable and environmentally responsible community. One of the ways in which we maintain this commitment is in our construction of new city buildings and parks. To help explain this commitment to sustainability and what it means to our construction practices is Sean Cruz Weisner for the City of Peoria. Thank you. Sean, welcome. Tell us, okay, first of all, what is sustainability? For some, you know, it's, it's easy to throw that word out, but what does it really mean? Yeah, and again, I agree with you. It is it's easy to throw it out. Um, for, for Peoria, it actually has a number of meanings. Um, we have actually uh, have a formal sustainability action plan that we're in the midst of actually updating as a staff right now. But if you actually go back into uh, such documents as the city's adopted general plan, there's actually a sustainability environmental element to that. For Peoria, one of the things that we did a few years ago is with the downturn in the economy, we actually turned to a lot of sustainable elements to try and save money. You could say we went green to save green. <laughs> But we've gone further than that. We've actually now adopted uh, the principles of sustainability, which is really looking at, you hear about the three-legged stool, the society, uh, economics, and um, uh, uh, the environment. And you have to sort of balance them out. I think Peoria in general has done a great job of trying to balance those things out. And now we're looking for our next step and trying to set some stretch goals that we can go forward with. Uh, so for uh, sustainability for Peoria, some of the things that we've done, you know, we've got, uh, we were very successful and we got an energy efficiency and, and conservation block grant that's allowed us to go out and actually promote sustainability from an energy conservation level. That was specific because that grant was for energy, uh, talking about lighting technology, heating technology, but we were able to go out and change uh, um, to new light technology in both city streets and city facilities, mm -hmm. which is helping save some dollars as well as in some cases actually uh, producing better light performance. Uh, but some other things that we've done is, you know, we've got one of the city's uh, uh, largest capital projects uh, that they've done recently is the Happy Valley Road construction. Mm -hmm. That has actually been entered into um, a new sustainability criteria program through the Federal Highway Administration. It actually made it through the pilot program and actually helped set some of the criteria for moving forward for uh, 
other future road projects, not just in Peoria, but nationwide, to actually gain a sustainable element to them. So it's, it's so much, it's from light bulbs to building construction, even yeah. planning and perhaps how we zone and, and how we use the desert environment that we live in. Yeah, very much so. And that's one of the reasons, you know, I started my career with Peoria in the utilities world, uh, dealing with water and wastewater. A few years ago, I was actually transferred down to the planning and community development department to really try and integrate in sustainability and systems planning so that we don't look at just one element. Land planning needs to take into account all the transportation needs, all the utility needs, et cetera. And by doing that, we're actually building a more sustainable environment because we're not going back in. We're, we're building things properly the first time. We're not having to rip out streets and, and put in new utilities in the future. That's one way around it. And we're just looking at integrating things a lot better. From a land planning standpoint, you know, we are trying to look for more mixed-use developments. We're trying to create uh, employment uh, within the city. That's, the benefit of that is that actually you don't have people commuting outside the city, so you're actually reducing the carbon footprint of our citizens by actually allowing them to work locally. And, you know, to, to work, shop, and, and to play locally is one of the big things that we're really trying to commit to, not to be a bedroom community anymore. And so, so really, you know, some of the um, ills, quite honestly, that the Valley has seen over the years is that we grew so far out and we're paying the price for it in many ways. Now we're looking at using sustainability as kind of the backbone and, and driver of this. We're looking to be smart in how we grow up, smart how we lay the groundwork for everything else. True, true, very much so. Yeah, again, because, uh, you know, uh, land was cheap, so it was easy to keep, you know, uh, the sprawl development going, where now the, that is not the case for development anymore. They're being more strategic. Developers don't have the funding to go and and build a new development out, you know, three or four miles away from the rest of the community. And it doesn't make sense to do that type of development anymore. Pure has an opportunity to redevelop some certain areas, like our old town area and our sports complex area. We're trying to redevelop those into more core areas. We're looking at how we can integrate transit services into the city better. You know, we've got a good roadway network, and that's been a lot of uh, uh, construction over the years. And again, uh, going back to the uh, Happy Valley Road project, is we've actually done a lot of elements that are, are sustainable in our roadway. But you know, what about transport, other transit options for the Peoria? You know, extending the uh, Valley uh, um, uh, uh, bus grid system into our val into, into our uh, jurisdiction would be a great thing to do. You know, we've debated light rail. Uh, it might not be viable for us, but we have looked at it. We've looked at commuter rail. I think that's one of the more viable options. You get commuter rail across Grand Avenue. It gives you an opportunity to have a commuter rail stop around the Old Town area and start redeveloping the Old Town area. And it's, it's, it's something that happens in many jurisdictions, and we're looking forward to actually doing that here. Now, what are some of the things that um, someone watching the show can really see as a tangible, sustainable um, type of project that the city's done? You know, I, you know... Like, like the water, the, the reclaimed water, for example. Yeah, from a reclaimed waterfront, you know, I was actually having to be lucky to be the project manager for the city's Butler Water Reclamation Facility. You can drive up to the facility. You might, if you contact the utilities department, you could probably get a tour of the facility itself. That is actually a state-of-the-art wastewater treatment plant. It takes the, the wastewater generated from generally south of Bursley Road in the city and actually treats it to a high enough standard that we can then use it as a water resource, a reclaimed water source. So the end product of that is if you come up here to the City Hall campus, the new Centennial Plaza right now, the water being used for the grass and all the, the landscaping around that is actually coming from that treatment plant. Mm -hmm. As well as there's a project right now to convert the rest of the landscaping on the City Hall complex over to that same reclaimed water source. So we're taking, we're taking our wastewater, converting it into another water resource, and we're not taking potable water away from the citizens. We're actually extending our potable water supply for the future, making a re long-term renewable water supply. So that's something from a water standpoint. Some other things that are going on is, you know, we have the municipal court building that recently was expanded, almost doubled in size. I think it was more than doubled in size. And actually, with that construction, um, there was a lot of green elements put into it or sustainable elements. I'm not sure which to call it sometimes. <laughs> but it actually has made, it, it, it got registered as a, or certified as a lead, le, uh, leadership in energy and environmental design, uh, gold standard building. The only higher level is platinum. So we got the second highest level with that building retrofit. And in conjunction with retrofitting that one building, we actually retrofitted the um, uh, what's called the central plant, the mechanical units for the most of the, the, the city hall campus. So we've actually improved the efficiency of the overall campus with that one project. And you know, we're doing. Uh, I know the, the our city capital engineering group is uh, working on expansions to the um, uh, the. Uh, oh, where is it? I'm trying to think of it. The um, the center north of the City Hall campus, the rec center. Okay, right, that's the community gonna, center the there. Community yeah. center, sorry. <laughs> and that's going to go to, a, again, at least a lead silver standard. 
It's integrating several things. And what does that and what does that mean um, in many? I know it's like building materials, but it's also how we remove a lot of materials too. Again, the lead is actually um, uh, whole encompassing. It actually goes into how you design your building. You look at it from a standpoint of, in the case of municipal court building, it actually got a lot of points for the fact that you weren't building a new building; you were adding on to an existing building. That is actually one of the principles of, of, of the LEAD program. If you can use it, reuse existing, that's your first thing rather than building new. But if you have to build new, you look at how it fits within the environment around it. That's one of the things. How you tie it into transit services, how you tie it into um, you know, uh, bicycling, commuting, or other options, how you tie it into just the surrounding environment. And then it, you know, there's several tiers, and it also looks at the materials that are being used for the construction elements of it. Um, you know, they talk about uh, it's VOC, volatile, volatile organic compounds. The, the, the off-gassing... That's why you're here. Yeah. Yeah, I can't say that more than once. Um, the the off-gassing you get from paint, from carpet, um, and, and, and the newer materials have less of that, so it's less harmful for the people. It's also using renewable products in, in those materials, as well as during the construction itself, is a very, um, um, it generates a lot of debris. And it's actually, uh, lead takes into account, if you recycle that debris, go to the effort of actually separating your de debris apart and actually recycling it, you get points for that. And, and so it looks at air quality, it looks at materials, it looks at how you design the site. So it's an all-encompassing. It looks at the final uh, performance of the building itself. Did you meet the design criteria as far as how much energy is being consumed in it? So it's a great program from the standpoint of it provides an all-encompassing. There are other programs out there that the city is pursuing. Uh, one is Energy Star, the Department of Energy the U.S. Uh, government Department of Energy has the Energy Star rating system. We were looking at, instead of just, uh, you know, we, again, I mentioned municipal court building and, this, and the, the other building, we're getting lead uh, certifications on these other buildings, like the bone we're sitting in currently, we're looking at getting Energy Star rating, which shows that we are actually, relative to other buildings of the same type, nature, and size, in this area of the, of the, of, um, of the, the country, we are a, a high-performing building, and it looks like we will get a, a good a goal rating for both um, this development community services and the public safety administration buildings. So, Well, we have to be sustainable of our time today because okay. we can talk about this um, so, so much. I mean, the city's doing so much. You're really leading a great team and, and, and getting the word out there. And, and uh, I know we'll have you back to talk even further about this. But when you, if you get a chance, um, you know, it, recycling is such a big program here in this town, but that's just a small part of what sustainability means. And to learn more, you can go in, on to our website at www.peoriaaz.gov, and we have a special section just on sustainability, including a lot of uh, questions and answers uh, for you there, and, and some information about some of the programs that we have going on. So, um, Sean, thank you very much. We'll have you back on uh, to talk <laughs> even further about it, and uh, we'll be back right after this. Thanks. We're here now with Kelly Kincaid, Special Events Supervisor for the City of Peoria's Community Services Department. And welcome. Thank you. you. Know, thanks for coming over today. And, and we're here to talk about uh, the P83 party coming up uh, March 3rd. What's this all about? It sounds like a big deal. Well, it's definitely a party, and what a party it will be. Um, as you stated, it will be on March 3rd. Um, it will be between Mariner's Way and Stadium Way on 83rd Avenue. We're going to close the street down. Um, the event itself will start at 4 o'clock and go until 9. We will have uh, lots of different things for people to do. Um, we have a uh, headliner band that is from Seattle that will be joining us, and their name is Candlebox. Um, they play modern rock, um, very big in the 1990s. and um, They're making a comeback. Making a too. comeback, yeah. yes. They have a CD that will be dropping early March, um, so we're real excited about that. Um, we also have a spring training game going on as well, and um, if you get a ticket to the spring training game, you'll be able to come over to the event itself and get in for free. So, so what's this event about? Why, what are we trying to do with this party? 
We are trying to um, give the Peoria residents um, something back, a, a, a fiesta, a festival um, block party, and also engage in the uh, entertainment district around and restaurants and get people out to uh, enjoy some of the amenities that are out there and um, do it all in one night and have a big party behind it. So, so the street's blocked off. There's going to be vendors there selling uh, food, and, and it's, there's also beer available as well. Yes, there will be beer available, wine and spirits um, for ad additional cost. Yeah. Now, how much does it cost to get in? It's ten dollars for adults. Uh, Twelve and free. Twelve and under are free um, admission to the event. And again, it is from four to nine, and it's on March third, and we are going to have a blast. Yeah. So when you say blocking off the street, I mean the complete street between at the Peoria Sports Complex, the mm -hmm. street that goes from Mariners Way to Seattle or to Stadium Way. Stadium to Way. Mariners. Thank yes. you. Mm -hmm. I should yes. know that being the information right? officer, right? <laughs> right? Yeah. Yes, that will be blocked off during that time um, for the event itself. So we'll be in the actual street. Yeah. Now, how um, how can uh, people get more information about this or get tickets right now? Um, all the information they'd want to know and more, um, they can go to www.p83az.com to get okay. information. Good. Okay. And that's a, a site that is uh, dedicated to promoting the, the entertainment district there uh, that is being kind of called P83 for Peoria 83rd Avenue. So it's, it's a real convenient spot. And, and off of that, they can uh, click and get tickets from there and Absolutely. more information. Yes. And so um, how many people are we expecting? We're expecting anywhere from six to eight thousand. Wow. So um, we're looking forward to it. That's a, that's a big crowd. That's a big event. Absolutely. Well, Candlebox. I'm not sure um, if you've had a chance, but I've looked them up online on YouTube and stuff, and it's it's they were big time, and, and they're still big, and, right. and they're on, they have their own following. They just took some time out with their families and all, and now they're coming out with a new album. I guess, um, or CD, on uh, March 13th. So that's really going to be exciting. Right. And there's going to be other stages going on as well? Right, right. There'll be other entertainment leading up to Candlebox, um, and we are working on that as we speak. So, yeah. Well, that's, that's fantastic. Well, Kelly, thank you very much for coming here and talking about the show and, and what's coming up. And if you want more information, you can go to uh, p83az.com or you can even check out uh, Peoria's new website at peoriaaz.gov and there'll be a link to it as well. Um, thanks again. It's going to be a fun event and I, I can't wait to uh, party all night. Thank you. Yeah. Ball breaking low under the bat and the count is one and one. It's an ideal baseball day. Nice crowd in the stands and nobody out on the grass. Conditions are ideal for a good game. Come to the Arizona Centennial Baseball Celebration at the Peoria Sports Complex and enjoy a vintage baseball game, historical displays, and a spectacular fireworks show. Admission is free. Presented by the Salt River Project and the City of Peoria. Well, that's our show for this month. I hope you liked it and found it informative. We would love to hear from you. If you have a question about what you saw here today on Pulse or you have an idea, send us a note at news at peoriaz.gov. So from all of us here at Peoria Channel 11, I'm Bo Larson. Thanks for watching, and here's to a safe, healthy, and prosperous new year.